Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're participating in the American Long Rifles Forum November Postal Match. We're going to be shooting this 8.5 by 11 bullseye target at 50 yards from the bench. I've had a request to show more of the Kibler Southern Mountain Rifle, so that's what we're going to be shooting here today. This is a flintlock long rifle that you can see some of the how-to on the channel. Um, this is a 40 caliber. We're going to be shooting about 40 grains, I think, of GoX 3F. And this week I wanted to try, I've lubed up some of my patching here with Shenandoah Valley um, patch lube and bore cleaner just to try it out and uh, see if it helps with some of the fouling that we've been dealing with um, shooting this. I think I can really swab between more shots um, to keep the bore cleaner, but trying to make cleaning up after we shoot a little bit easier. So because we've just gotten into the range here, I wanna go over a couple things um, on taking your flintlock out to shoot it for the first time or maybe the first time in a while, just some safety precautions. You'll see here at the end, I have an oiled patch that I always leave in the bore of my muzzle loader when I leave it to sit. I'm gonna make sure I'm taking that out, checking for any bore obstructions there. You never know, and it's, it's easy to forget what you did last time. And then much like we do with our percussion muzzle loaders, where we pop a cap, we're going to do the same thing with our flintlock by priming the pan, just the pan, and then, uh, and then firing it just to make sure that we have our breech and, uh, and touch hole clear. So to do that, I'm just gonna get out my little priming horn I'll find it in my bag here. This is the primer that I use. This is from Jerry Rice from the American Long Rifles Forum. Um, I got it, I think, for a real steal. And it's a really neat, this kind of funnel brass little primer. I just love this little thing. Oh, a little bit too much there. And then just in case, put my ears in here. There we go. We know our touch hole is clear and we can start loading. 40 grains isn't a whole lot, but we don't need a whole lot. This little guy, got my little ball starter here. I think these are some Hornady, a friend dropped them off from Deer Creek Products. I like using them, they're nice and smooth. And then I'm using my range rod today. Um, I'd like to get my wooden rod out some more cold day like today. I'm just taking it easy. Four to go. Always want to make sure that you're closing this, putting it away from where you're shooting. I've had a few folks asking about uh, maybe an I Love Muzzleloading Postal Match. And, and right now it's, it's something I really like to do, but um, there are several other postal matches out there, the ALR form being one of them, that I really recommend folks try out, especially if you're just getting started. I think sometimes the forums can be really intimidating, but um, the ALR forum and the muzzleloading forum, I think are really a group of, of good people. And you don't have to be a crack shot <laughs> to participate, you know, it's just for fun, just a way to get everybody out and kind of get with the community a little bit about your shooting. I haven't gotten any you know, nasty comments or anything. That I think is kind of a, a real concern for a lot of people just getting started. Um, but like I said, the ALR forum and the muzzleloading forum, you know, great little postal matches, great communities to be a part of. This isn't sponsored or anything, um, but you know, check it out. Something I, I like about, I mean, the neat thing about flint locks is that fireball going off in front of your face. Um, but I just reviewed the footage because I, I felt like, man, I felt like my lock wasn't very fast. I had a little bit of delay. But I reviewed the footage, and to me, man, it feels like that lock is just going right out when I watch the video. But when you're right there with it, time really slows down, and I, I love that. And, I mean, that's kind of the thing about muzzleloaders is you're slowing down time a little bit, shooting and, and doing all this, you know, between every shot. Every shot really counts. Um, and I think that's something a lot of us really enjoy about muzzleloaders. But I encourage you, if you, if you think that you're having um, a delay or an issue, it really helps to set up a little camera, even just your phone, and review a few shots. And um, you can slow down and kind of do a frame by frame on a lot of phones now to get an idea if you actually have a problem or not, or if you're like me, you're just kind of in the moment and <laughs> just kind of entranced by the... I don't know, the slowdown, the, uh, I don't know, what do you call that? 
kind of the meditation of it as the fireball goes off like an inch from your eyeball. <laughs> we should always have some kind of safety glass in between. This is our last shot, and then we're gonna go take a look at the target and see how we're doing. You know, I, I feel like I've been pretty steady here, but um, I think it's kind of anybody's guess at this point. I really haven't shot this as much this year as I wanted to, so maybe this will be kind of the impotence to get me out and shooting it more and, and getting a little more dialed in. We'll see though. I will say being so damp, our pan, uh, it's gonna need some cleaning after this for sure. I feel like this is what it must feel like to try to shoot a flintlock in the Pacific Northwest a day like today. It's just an ugly day. There's that wet pan for you. Pretty sure I put powder in there. We'll see now. Glad it's not a clatch match. Ah. Okay, I'm glad it went off. I'm glad we didn't dry ball. That would have been embarrassing. Um, but you know, if you haven't dry balled, you're, you're going to at some point. So we're gonna set this up, put the muzzle up so we're nice and safe and go down and check the target. This is pretty bad. But uh, for the, the sake of transparency here, I'm not a perfect shot, you know. Um, I don't want anybody to think that you have to be perfect when you're doing these matches. So um, this is my target, 50 yards off the bench. We got uh, three way down here, really bad shots, and two up here a little more acceptable. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna post up another one of these targets, do another five shots, and see if I can't tighten this up a little bit. I know it's windy today, but man, this is, it's not too far for that, for that 40 caliber there. I kinda was hoping for a little bit better. So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna shoot another one. We'll see how it goes. Post the second target, I've consulted with the Brain Trust. This being the first time shooting this rifle at 50 yards, I'm gonna bump up the powder charge to 50 grains over the 40 grains that we saw in our first, uh, in our first target there. The theory here being we need a little more powder at this distance to maybe tighten it up. At 25 yards, that 40 grains was plenty, um, but I think uh, you know this is all part of the further load development that comes in when we're shooting muzzleloaders like this one, especially a new muzzleloader. Uh, I've seen all the Kibblers perform exceptionally well, and I think that that spread is just on me, really, for finding the group. So we're going to experiment with that a little bit on this next target and see how we do. So we're going in here to check our second target here at 50 yards. We bumped up that powder charge to 50 grains to accommodate for our 50 yard uh, distance here. Still shooting from the same bench, same position and everything. And uh, I'm looking at the target here. Much better group for us here. Much better. I'm, I'm happier with that. I wish we were a little bit higher up on the target there. Really not a bad group if we were up here. Um, so we need to adjust our sight, maybe just a hair. I think we're getting a little bit of a better idea of, um, of our powder charge there. If you have an idea or something else that you think I should try with this, um, you know, please let me know. You can write it down in the comments or shoot me an email. I'm happy to learn from everybody out there. I know there's a lot of people out there that have decades more experienced than me. Here you can see both targets. I've got them back here on the bench, just kind of looking at them. This was our 40 grain target um, shot at the 50 yards off the bench rest. And here's our 50 grains shot 50 yards. A little bit of wind there. You can see I've been fighting all day. Um, and then this is our 50 grain charge at, um, at, at that 50 yards. So like I said, the next step I'm gonna be considering is taking it up to 55, to see if we tighten up or if we spread out. And if we spread out at that 55, I'm gonna take it down to 45 and see if it's a little bit tighter than this, but um, I'm kind of, just tore it there. But I'm betting we get a little bit tighter here at 55 grains. Another thing I'm considering here is I'm gonna be on the hunt for a 40 caliber round ball mold. Uh, right now we're shooting those 395s and I'm kind of wondering if taking it up to a straight 40 would be a little bit tighter. I have a mold for 0.41 for one of my family target rifles, but I'm not sure if that's gonna be a little too tight in this flintlock here. I'd like it to be loose enough that I can load from my ramrod, um, but it might be something to consider for some matches, experimenting with that 410. But wanted to show you that side by side. This is what a, the difference of that 10 grains 
makes here. Everything else the same, you know. So if you're having trouble with your muzzleloader, if you're maybe shooting a group like this one, consider uh, bumping up your powder charge or adjusting that powder charge, see if it makes a difference. Again, especially when it comes to a traditional muzzleloader like a flintlock um, and like a percussion rifle, you know, cap lock gun, you're gonna run into this, this um, you know, sighting in and, and um, load development. That's all this is. And once we find that load that this gun likes, this rifle likes, especially at 50 yards, um, I'm gonna be really comfortable shooting that load just about at any distance um, that I'm gonna be reasonably shooting this rifle at. It's gonna be great for target shooting as well as maybe some small game, maybe school or rabbit hunting once we get this tightened up. Really, uh, you know, that's a pretty good group, I think, for squirrel or rabbit hunting. And I, I'd like to just get it a little bit closer if we can, ideally, kind of all inside that bullseye. Uh, mark that we have there. But, you know, that's something for another video. I'd like to thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about any of this or any tips for me or anybody else that's young and getting into muzzleloading, please reach out. Please write them in the comments below or shoot me an email. I'm happy to share any knowledge that is out there and really want to make it easier for more people to get involved in this great sport of muzzleloading. I think really it's the original American sport and uh, the more we can get more people involved in it, the better off we'll all be. I'll have a link to the postal match that this target was shot as a part of at the American Long Rifles Forum in the description below. Once again, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.